Hey guys, and welcome back to another pack making tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about proportions and color schemes. So here's a sword I'm making for a new pack, and this is a pretty good example of proportions. This is 32x, and we're going to be talking about proportions for a sword. And what proportions are is the length between this and this and this. And basically it's the size and shape of the sword, kind of. For example, here are the proportions for my sword. I'm going to go on a new layer, and I'm just going to kind of go, like, make a green color. And I'm going to disable anti-aliasing, and here's kind of the proportions of my sword. So I have it like this, and then my blade is like that. And if I disable this, this is pretty good proportions for a sword. You want the blade and the handle to be longer than the cross guard. And you want it to, you want the cross guard to just be slightly below this line across here. So if I go here, this line across here is the center line. And you want the cross guard to be below that, the sword to go past it and closer towards this corner and the cross guard to go closer towards this corner. If you want a longer sword, you can just make it longer. For example, like this, this would also work pretty well in game. And I wouldn't make the cross guard any longer than this. So this is a pretty good layout for a sword. Another way of thinking about that is if you draw these two lines, your sword, you want the cross guard to be down here, just below this line or so, and about this long. So you can make it a bit smaller, you can make it a bit bigger. For example, making it like this would be fine. A bit smaller. Or making it a bit bigger, like this or something, would be fine too. What I would do is I'd do something like this, and then I'd go on a new layer, and I'd take black, and I'd make sure I'm on my pencil tool, and I would start sketching out the shape of my sword. So I'd do something like this, maybe. And I'm doing Control z to remove any mistakes that I make. And this is how I'm going to start sketching out my sword. All right, so I'm just going to do that really quickly. So as you can see here, I've kind of laid out my sword. I would say these cross guards are a bit long, so all I'm going to do is select like, like this, click M to move it, and then I just do this to move it in with the arrow keys. So again, select here, move in with the arrow keys. Now this is a pretty nice shape. I'm going to extend the sword by selecting like this, Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and then I'll move it with the arrow keys. Like that and now if I hide this I have a nice looking shape for a sword and now we're going to talk about a color scheme so for this sword here I used a color scheme like this what I do is I press K which is a color picker which is this one right here and I cl click with my left mouse button and my right mouse button to select these colors and then when I go back here I can press G for gradient and make the gradient for my sword, as you can see it here. When I've gone back to my sword shape, I'm going to select like this with the by pressing S and selecting. I'm going to get the magic wand tool, which is Shift S, by the way. And I'm going to hold Alt. And what holding Alt does is anything that I select deselects. So holding Alt will deselect with the magic wand. And now I can press G and start doing a gradient. Also, it's good to make sure you're on the right layer. So now I've got my gradient here. Very nice. And what having this palette and theme does is it keeps all of your items consistent throughout the whole texture pack. So every item will look the same. Ones aren't slightly different colors to the others. For this cross guard, I'm just going to use a gradient from gray to black, which I'm going to use here by having the lighter to darker. And then I'm just going to do a small gradient here. This looks a bit strange because the outline is black. So often what I do is I'd hold control and I can select multiple things by holding control. And then I'd go Shift S to get the magic wand tool. And then I'd hold Alt again, click, and then I'd select this whole thing. Like this, like this. And then maybe I'll make this pommel this color. So I'll press K, left, right click, and then I'll do a gradient again. So there we go. And now what we need to do is we use one of our effects. So if I add a new layer here, after selecting this, effect selection, outline selection. And this is Bolt Bait's outline selection. And what I recommend is going outline and making it smallest and then changing it to black and clicking OK. This is what it creates. And these are transparent pixels here. So what I do is I just delete them by using the magic wand tool and holding shift. And when holding shift, it selects every single one of those. And as you can see, it selected too much. So I just turn down the tolerance and there we go. And now I can press delete. And now I just have a lovely outline. And also, I'm going to delete this part down here because that is just a pref personal preference of mine. And now all I can do is I can either double click this layer and make the opacity lighter, as you can see like this. 
or I can shift select all of these and then now I've deleted that layer and now I have all these pixels selected so I can do numerous things here. I can do control shift U which brings up our hue and saturation. If you don't want to use a shortcut you can click adjustments hue and saturation and I can make it darker or I can press control shift M and this brings up curves. I haven't talked about curves yet but what curves do is up here this is making the lighter parts lighter. As you can see, the lighter parts are getting lighter. This is making the lighter parts darker. It's also making the darker parts a bit darker and you can make them brighter, darker. And what I usually do is I do something a bit like this. That looks pretty good there. I usually just make a curve below. And as you can see here, I have a darker sword. Maybe this could have been a bit darker. So what I'm gonna go back is control Z to get back to my selection. And I'm just gonna make it a bit darker. And there we go, I have a nice outline now. And I'm gonna repeat that for all of these. So when creating the outline for this, I'm put it on a new layer. You can press Control F and that will redo your last effect up here. So repeat outline selection, Control F. And as you can see here, we still have the anti-aliasing here. So what I could do is I can lower the opacity. This actually keeps the anti-aliasing here. Control Shift M for curves and it keeps the same layout and then control U for lightness. And now this is a pretty decent sword. It needs a bit of refinement, extra shading, but we'll talk about that in the future. But this is a good, nice, proportioned sword. A few th extra things I want to say is that you always want this part to either be the same width or smaller width than the blade, because otherwise it looks really strange. You always want to be keeping, as you can see here, we have one pixel, one pixel, two pixels, and then five pixels. You don't really want it to be like this, for example. As you can see here, it goes one pixel, two pixel, one pixel, five pixels. It's better to have it go down. So one pixel, one pixel, two pixels, five pixels. If that makes any sense, I'm not sure if it will, but you kind of want it to be a smooth curve. This isn't that smooth, but it still works. Just personal preference for me, really. Other than that, you can also use Control Shift M to adjust your whole sword. So if I move this to the side, you can kind of just adjust the whole thing if I want. That looks pretty cool. And I'm going to be talking about more advanced shading in the future. And what I would say is try to be original. Don't just copy exactly what I do in this series. That is the last thing I want you to do because then every pack will just look like my packs. Try and be inventive. Change these, this pixel. Maybe you can make this longer, for example. Or maybe you can use a different gradient style or etc and just try and do something different and that is really going to help you in your texture pack making to grow if you want to grow a youtube channel or if you want to have people enjoy your packs having something different is a good selling point for your texture packs anyway i hope you enjoyed this small video going through the first way to make your sword proportions and an early showcase in shading i hope you enjoyed it I have the playlist on the left of my screen and if you want to subscribe, subscribe on the right. I'm going to be uploading a lot more of these in the future. Hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.